Hello, everybody. Um, all right, so I guess we'll get started. I um, just want to introduce myself. My name is Heli Colorado. Um, I am a module developer at ActiveLamp. And uh, actually, primarily, I do a lot of theming. So um, after the course of time of developing in uh, Drupal, um, I learned a lot of things with the uh, whole ins and outs of uh, theming. And uh, one of the biggest downfalls I've seen is uh, just uh, all the excessive markup that comes out from views. Um, I came from a world where semantic and clean markup was a virtue. And uh, when you started working with Drupal, um, you see that there's a lot of excess markup coming from the entire CMS. And uh, it could get kind of frustrated if you're those type of people. So theming views is going to be the topic. Um, let's go into uh, some of the overview so we can break down what this uh, presentation is going to be. Um, essentially, the whole purpose of, the, uh, of this talk is uh, just to teach you guys how not to be suckers as far as like how views output is and not letting that be your development environment. So I mean that in the nicest way possible. Um, so first thing we're going to cover is uh, the uh, how to. The how to. Actually implementing these uh, template overrides and we'll talk a little bit about how these, uh, these templates are actually chained together to render a complete view. And uh, another important part is going to be uh, pre-processing these fields to actually have variables to work with just like you're used to with every other template. Um, after that segment, uh, we're going to talk about just, you know, some of the tips that I have for you guys. Um, this is just the way, uh, a way that makes sense to me to kind of organize all your templates and all your display templates in logical places so you don't have like a theme layer that has a gazillion files in the root directory. And after that, I'm going to talk about a cool tool that makes all this uh, process a lot easier. So let's jump on it. Um, so to make sure that we're all on the same page, I'm uh, going to talk about the anatomy of uh, basically a view and how it's rendered. And uh, basically the way it works is that a uh, view's rendering you know, output is consisted of several plugins that are chained together that uh, you know, they grab all the data that they need to and then they just start outputting everything. So every plugin is responsible for uh, outputting a particular uh, template. The first uh, plugin that gets into play is so it's gonna work now, is the display, the display plugin. Let me actually take a step back. And I'll show you the markup that it actually renders. So the display plugin is responsible for this wrapper text that gives you div and then a bunch of classes to go along with it. Um, this is actually the short version of it. This display renders out. You know, if you're logged in, you have some admin links at the top, so it's handled right here. Also, if you have like attachments either on the top or the bottom, any headers. Uh, or footers, or even pagers. All that stuff is rendered uh, by the display template. So that is responsible for getting all that markup out there. Uh, the next part of this is the style plugin, which is responsible for all the wrappers of every view. So you've seen views row one, views row two. Uh, this display, uh, this plugin actually, uh, iterates through every one of the rows that you have and wraps all this around it. The uh, next plugin uh, is the row and uh, this is responsible for basically outputting all of your fields. And this is probably the heaviest one. Um, if you don't you know, remove your labels, it's going to have excess divs here and excess divs there. And even within each field has a, you know, an excess of wrapper that's not necessarily uh, useful. Um, and thereafter, it's just going to be the field uh, template. And this template is really terse. I mean, it's just you know, render output, and that's it. So uh, this should look familiar to you. Right, this is what you see in Firebug. It's what you see in your source code. Uh, so far, does anybody have any questions regarding this? Everybody's on board? All right, cool. So we'll get into the how-to. And uh, I'm going to try really hard not to get boring. Um, this is going to get really dry because we're going to be working with code. So bear with it. So this is our demo site. Um, and this is going to be rendering, I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five views in here. And uh, this one, well, this particular page doesn't have any particular modifications. Um, it is just a custom page callback. I should probably show you the code so you see how this is actually rendered. Uh, so here we go. Um, this particular page is handled by all of this. 
So we have five views that are being embedded into the page. So it's really simple. Nothing else is going on there. And of course, we have our views being uh, exported. So I'll go ahead and close that out. And what I want to do is uh, show you guys a markup. It's pretty heavy. This is just one view. And here begins the other one. And what I'll do is I'll just take a snapshot of how big this actual file is. So I'm just going to save this as normal.html. I'll go ahead and save that. Cool. And let's check out how big it is. Can you guys see that? It says 29, 29k. So that's how big our actual HTML file is. All right, we'll just close that out, and we'll look into that later. So now that you guys have familiarity with how the demo site's going to work, let's go over to our views itself and uh, actually modify this. So we'll look into the uh, news view. And here's going to be the essential part to this. Have you guys worked with the uh, theme information tab? Uh, who's not familiar with this? Anybody can raise their hand? All right, cool. Are you guys uh, familiar with views, by the way? It's kind of a prerequisite. <laughs> um, I'm going to assume you know at least the most part of the UI. Um, but I'll explain what this means right here. So like I mentioned, every plugin is responsible for a certain rendering template. Um, the first render is uh, the display output. And what Views is doing is essentially saying that this is the default template that I have registered in the theme registry. And here are a preset of possible template names that I will accept if they are created. And uh, what this uses is, um, the way this works is it's a mechanism in Drupal Core called Patterns. And uh, has anyone heard of Patterns in Drupal Core? Drupal 6? No? OK. So um, essentially what it is is, uh, it's a mechanism for you to declare one uh, theme hook and say that this is going to be a pattern. So anything that has this particular name with the dash dash or whatever regular expression that comes after that, if Drupal can find that anywhere on my site, I want you to automatically register that into the theme registry. So then you could actually use that and you're going to inherit all the other properties that came from the original theme hook. So um, again, a lot of people don't know about uh, patterns. It's not really, I don't even think Drupal core is aware of patterns. Um, it's not implemented anywhere. I think views is probably the only thing that actually implements it. So uh, anyway, that's how you can just create these templates on the fly, and it's going to render uh, just fine. So um, this list is essentially, um, I guess you can say, an order of specificity. Um, this last display, uh, this last template, it reads views, view, news, default. And what's that saying is, all right, it's going to use the views. I'm going to go ahead and up this. And we're looking at this one right here. I'm going to look at the views view uh, theme hook. And I'm going to look for the name of the view. And then I'm going to look for the name of the display. Each one of these should have a different display. Internally, this one's called default, even though it's labeled marquee. Um, but that's how it basically finds all its displays. And uh, likewise with every other. OK. Likewise with every other plugin, it looks for the same exact pattern where, you know, the default is views view unformatted, and uh, you want to nail down to just every template inside of that uh, that view, or every one of these unformatted styles across any view. Yada yada. I mean, it just it goes on and on. So anyway, this is important, however, because uh, we need to know exactly which template file we want to use to override. So um, you can check out what display uh, output actually outputs by just clicking on that link, and you can see like all the markup that's actually generated from it. And uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to copy all that stuff and uh, label it as a views news default or whatnot. I'm just basically going to copy that into my theme directory. And uh, one thing I'm going to do is instead of having to like type this code and screw up and have awkward silence moments, um, I'm just going to like switch from branch to branch, and you're going to see the progression um, of the code. So looking into our theme layer right now. Uh, this is the theme itself. It's just a custom theme. There's, this is a, a base theme. It's just an info file and a CSS file for basic just styling. And going into the next branch, I'm just going to flush my cache. All right, so now we have that views view tpl.php. And what you could have done, I mean, what I did was uh, copy the name of this file, and just pop it over to my theme layer. And I essentially just copy-pasted 
everything that was from that original template file. And so because this exists now, views, when it, you know, resets the template files, it's going to say that, hey, I found a file called views, views. Um, nothing really changed, but when you hover over it, you can see a little tooltip that says this file is actually found in sites, all themes, Karen, and that's the, the, the custom theme that we're using. So it's not using modules implementation of that template anymore. And what's cool about this is now you could actually modify and do a couple extra things that are a little more helpful. Uh, one thing that I do is um, I like to create a uh, ID for all of my views. Um, it's good for performance. It's just it's nice to have IDs because as far as the DOM is concerned, um, all your IDs are indexed. So that means it's a lot faster to you know access stuff with your CSS or with your JavaScript. So it's a good thing. So I'm going to leave this as just views view tpl.php because I want this to basically affect all my views. I don't have to keep repeating myself for every display, every view. I want to just leave it at that. Um, the next step I'm going to do, and I'm just going to go down my list right here with the revisions, is I'm going to copy out the row tpl.php, I think. Flush my cache once again. We'll see what's new over here. Okay, cool. So what I have done is uh, the same thing that I did with the display template. I did with the row templates. Um, and I can see it's views, view, fields. That's like the original hook name. Uh, maps, which was the name of the view. And default, default.tpl.php. Right, That was the name of the display. Um, let's go check out that view and see how that affected it. That's actually a different view. First of all, awesome, let's go to theme info. And probably don't have to rescan the templates, but you can see that this right here is highlighted now because Drupal found that particular template in my theme directory. So instead of using the default, you know, uh, views, view, fields template, it's going to use my own custom one. And what I put inside of there, and I should probably show you what the original stuff looks like, and just click on this. All this uh, display logic is uh, is rendered, and there's a lot of excess divs in here. And what I did instead is, instead of copying that over directly, I just wiped it all clean, completely, it's completely gone. And I'm just going to save it like that, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, render that. Oh, that was under maps, like the very bottom. Okay, so it's completely gone. I'll just put that back in there. And this is basically, I mean, there's no variables in here. There's no dynamic data. It's just, you know, spitting out my H4 paragraph tag and then an image. And they were down there. Okay. Um, so far, does this make sense to you guys? Yes? No? I'll take your silence as a yes. <laughs> All right. So um, we can look at the markup now. And inspecting just this one element, uh, we can see that this is the wrapper. This is the display template at work. And inside of that, we have immediately all the rows. And this real template doesn't bother me. It's helpful classes, whatever. It's just one div. And inside of this, instead of having like just all kinds of markup for every field, um, basically it's really you know lightweight. We have our H4, P tag, and again this is just you know fake data right now. In a second, I'm going to actually input some stuff, um, and then the image. But as you can see, this is vastly different from say this view that has a couple other stuff in there. And this one is only displaying one you know field, but I mean everybody's views has like at least three or four, right? So you can imagine how huge this grows. I'm going to switch over to the next branch, all row templates. Right. i got to keep flushing my cache because when you make changes with templates, the theme registry needs to know what's going on. That worked out just fine. Okay, cool. So I'm going to move this over just a little bit. And hopefully, you guys can see that every one of the view that I have um, rendered on that page, I'm overriding all of the fields templates. 
And again, I'm just making it really terse. Um, this would have been the actual data that's rendered. I don't have too many fields being displayed, um, but just as an example. And we'll go over to the page where this is all being rendered and refresh. And this is what your view would like would look like if it had actual data. Um, but essentially, what we're doing is we're just repeating a bunch of pseudocode. Um, just to demonstrate that, once you override these templates, you have a much smaller DOM, a much smaller um, HTML file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check out the source, show you guys. Now this is one view, instead of it being massive, right? Now here's another. Let's go ahead and save this file. I'm going to call this better. And we'll set this up side by side so you guys can have something to look at. And now we see that we have 12K opposed to 29K, right? So now our file size is much smaller, easy to manage. Um, and it's good for, you know, file size. You have smaller, you know, files they have to download for the user. And that's even better for, you know, mobile phones. But um, the most important part for me is that the DOM is now smaller. And it's because the DOM's smaller, your JavaScript is probably going to be a lot more responsive to your selectors, and uh, amongst other things like your, uh, your CSS as well. So, next step to do is to actually pre-process the fields. Okay, so going back to the theme information, there's a few extra data in here. It's not just the display templates, you know, the actual names to display. But uh, we get a preview what the ID of every field is as far as view is concerned. This is how it uniquely identifies these fields. Um, you can see right here, field node, body, ID, body, and the title, ID title. Uh, CCK is usually like ID, field, whatever the CCK thing is, uh, dash, FID, value, whatever. And uh, we're not going to necessarily override these, but we are going to access the actual values of these variables inside of our templates. So I think I have that here, pre-process fields. Uh, get checkout of your function. Cool. Oh, that cleared. Awesome. So, um, all of these variables uh, are essentially pre-processed in your templates, but they're kind of hard to access because they're a little awkward. They're inside of a fields uh, array. And so inside of the array keys, we have essentially the IDs that I showed you guys, right? So we have title, body, and then field, image, FID. That's a CCK field. And to actually access that content that views generally does output, you just uh, grab that object and print out the content property, right? And um, I say pre-processing, but it's not necessarily pre-processing um, because it's not in a pre-processor. But we are just grabbing those you know, values into these variables right here that are uh, a little more useful in our templates. So now just, you know, instead of having the pseudocode or, you know, just, a, you know, um, text as a, just as a placeholder, we have actual variables that we can print out. And I believe this is with every, okay, cool, this is with all of the, the views. So now I can go ahead and go to the page that is rendered. And, all right, cool. So we're back to where we were from the very beginning. But we have a smaller DOM. And we have usable, you know, values in our, in our fields, oh, in our templates that we can actually use and modify your markup. Now at this point, uh, we have overridden the main display for the uh, the views. So now we have an ID for each one of these. And more importantly, more importantly, we have uh, modified the markup for the field template, which is the heavy one, right? And so now we have something that's a lot more semantic than what we had, you know, just out of the box. So every one of our rows, I mean, we're just spitting out the bare essentials that we need. And I mean, when you're styling, um, you want to have the bare essential markup because otherwise it's kind of a pain in the ass to, you know, do all kinds of workarounds. So uh, we have smaller markup, which is cool. And then, you know, as a result, we have smaller, cleaner CSS. Likewise with uh, JavaScript. Any questions so far? Yes, sir. I'm a new but yeah, I understand that 12k is smaller than 29k, but I keep thinking there's got to be something that's 17k that was important. We just wiped it away, and I think I don't really understand what's in there, so I don't feel as confident as you are. Oh, okay. Just go away. So the things that we did wipe away with is a, a bunch of unnecessary wrapping dibs. Okay. 
right? Um, you know, since we are working with a content management system, we have to have a, a lot of classes and a lot of extra dibs to kind of worry about like the uh, the off case scenarios that someone might need this. So instead of making it hard for like the entry user to try to figure out how to get that markup in there, let's just provide them with everything that they need, and they won't complain. And we'll leave it to the developers to figure out how to strip it out. Um, so this is what we're trying to do. We're stripping out the stuff that we don't need. And it actually makes your job a whole lot easier as far as, you know, styling. So, uh, yeah. Um, so that's essentially it for pre-processing and uh, overriding these templates. Uh, again, the pattern is you go to the theme information and figure out which uh, template you want to override. You want to figure out, like, what scope you want to override because each one of them has a certain level of specificity. And once you get those uh, template names inside of your theme, right out there, you have the ability to grab these variables and pop them in place of whatever custom markup that you want. And, I mean, essentially just stripping out all the stuff that you don't need anymore. So that's the big important part of this presentation, and everything else is just going to be filler. So, so the next part of this is going to be tips on organizing all this stuff. Like I mentioned, um, you don't want to uh, end up having like a theme layer that has like way too many files inside where it's really hard to maintain and it's just uh, it makes you hate your job. So one thing that I would recommend, I'm just going to switch over. thing I would recommend, and this is just the structure that I use, is uh, throwing in all of your view templates inside of a directory called views, right? So they're easy to find. And inside of that views directory, you have a list of all the different view names in there, so you're able to identify which is which. And even within that, you have a folder specifically for the display that you have inside of your view. So does everybody know what a display is in terms of views? Okay. So yeah. Uh, basically, inside of these displays or folders, we have uh, whichever uh, templates that we had to override, um, and uh, it could be a collection of two or three, and um, and yeah, so that's the organization of it. And uh, there is typically a little more to this. Um, maybe we will get to it along the way. All right, cool. So we'll go into the styling. So um, we still have this views, all these views, basically unstyled, and they look really ugly. Uh, the next step is going to be essentially to solve them. Okay. All right. So they're all styled. Um, now we have some nice jQuery stuff going on. And uh, as far as like uh, organization, this is where it kind of gets a lot more critical, because of course all this styling all these behaviors. Um, you know, we added a lot of complex code in here, jQuery libraries or your own custom JavaScript and really nice CSS to get this formatting the right way. Um, and the whole idea is to stay persistent with your organization, don't fall off the horse. Um, but uh, it really depends on your own style, right? Whatever is most comfortable with you. What I'm doing as of right now is I'm just throwing every, everything as far as scripts go inside of script directory and everything as far as style sheets go inside of one style sheet, and I typically don't. Uh, oh, I, I just typically don't work like that, uh, where we have you know a bunch of CSS in one file, and then you eventually have like a 5,000 line CSS file. And again, it's it's just so difficult and exhausting to work into that file. Uh, that's just my opinion, and I probably shouldn't even talk about this. Um, that's something I'm actually going to get into more in depth with the other presentation I'm going to do uh, regarding the whole concept of theme packets. Um, but moving forward. I'm just going to go ahead and go to revision 9 just to speed things up. So, and I'll give you an oh, one. Okay, cool. I'll show you how I file this uh, organized right here. So, going back into the views, um, say we'll look at uh, planets and orbit. 
Um, you might notice that I have uh, two displays or two templates that are being uh, uh, overridden right here. Um, we still have our original fields template being overridden. And uh, now I'm pulling in the actual display around it because uh, I want this view to be responsible for managing, managing its own assets. So as you can see, I'm including all the CSS and all JavaScript. And uh, what's cool about this mechanism is that uh, if you navigate to a different page that doesn't use this particular view, um, all the libraries that, in, that, that were included inside of this view to actually make it look the way it does uh, won't be included in that other page. So you're a little more resourceful. And uh, yeah, so here's the CSS and JavaScript. And uh, as you can see now, when we're just looking at this uh, orbit display, and we need to figure out, okay, I'm going to style it a little differently, or you know, maybe the client wanted it to be, uh, I don't know, a certain revision back or something. Uh, we just have to look at this CSS, opposed to having to look at um, the 5,000 lines of code that we had previously in the styles.css. So um, yeah, the whole concept here is uh, being as terse as possible with all of your uh, all of your markup, and uh, also having your your whatever your theme packet to be responsible. For all the assets that get pulled in, because it's a lot easier to manage this one file that has, you know, a few set of selectors um, than it is to manage a humongous file. But uh, one thing about that is, um, in order to have this level of, I guess, uh, organization inside of your theme, uh, there is a little extra steps that you have to do. For instance, actually overriding the display template so you can manage your CSS. Um, and so I guess this is where the, uh, the tool comes into place that actually makes this a lot easier. Um, so far, everybody understood what uh, we were talking about and we're all good? So. It's a contradiction because you have a styles and you have a script mm -hmm. directly, but then inside Orbit you have your own scripts and your own styles. Yeah, um, I probably should have pointed that out. Uh, that directory is gone now. So all of the scripts, they're actually in place of where they're supposed to be. Um, all the CSS there in the view that uh, that requires it. Cool. Yeah. So um, does uh, well, I'm not even gonna get into that. Anyway. So the next part. Oh, we should probably do a review. So again, going into the critical part, how to actually pre-process your fields and how to override your templates. Step one, you go into the theme information, right? And this is something we're gonna go and check in all the time. And you want to pick out, you know, which scope do I want to override, and uh, you know, copy paste that file, uh, the the file contents, and even the file name into your theme directory, and uh, you know, of course, flush your cache so you know that uh, Drupal, well, so Drupal knows what's going on as far as the theme registry goes. Um, and then step three, um, doing the actual uh, pre-processing of your variables, and in order to find that array key inside of the fields array, uh, you look in the theme information. Towards the bottom, you see all the field templates, and they have uh, the uh, ID of that particular field display. So you just pop that in there. And uh, you know, at this point, you can write your uh, your, your pseudo code, basically the, the whatever custom markup that you want, and just have placeholders in there until you actually pre-process these fields. And then you can actually pop them in, and there you go, nice and clean views. So into the actual plugin that makes this actually a lot easier. Okay, so um, you might notice that we have a different display in here. Um, it's called Theme Packet, and uh, what this essentially does is uh, it's going to automatically, like for every field that you have in here, if you look into the pre-processed fields, you have an option to say yes or no. Um, it'll go ahead and do all the work for you as far as uh, getting that variable name, and uh, basically this is the code that you would have to do inside of your templates, but it's going to go ahead and do that for you. And of course, if you don't like image, you can say, no, this is not an image, this is a thumbnail. Right? And you go ahead and change that so you have your own custom variables. And it'll even remind you what has been overridden, you know, what is the uh, custom field name. Cool. The uh, other aspect of this is you could actually put in a CSS ID. Um, you know, go ahead and name it or whatever you want. These uh, presets, as soon as you create a theme packet, it's going to automatically derive a name that might be the preset you want to use, so whatever the view name is, and then the display name, and the actual, I guess, the delta of it. Um, but of course, you could always change that. 
And if you do have a view, you know, in special cases that you have um, a view that's kind of a, uh, it reiterates over the page, so you have it displayed multiple times. Uh, having an ID in there is a bad idea. It will not validate your uh, markup. Uh, so you probably just want to remove it or something and say, actually not remove it, but I think you could. Yeah, you just remove it <laughs> and it'll be fine. And the most important part, I think, is the inclusion of assets as far as like your CSS and your JavaScripts. Um, what this tool will do is basically scout out, just like it's finding these patterns inside of your theme, it's going to find any assets that are nested within the same directory, you know, such as you know, carousel.js and the moving box.js library. And it's, go, it's going to go ahead and, you know, Drupal add CSS, Drupal add JS, each one of these during the preprocessors. So now you don't have to create a new template just to manage your assets. It's going to act, uh, it's going to automatically be handled for you. And this little symbol right here is just kind of reminding you that this is a library file. And it wasn't actually inside of the, uh, the, the theme directory inside of that particular view because, I mean, with the library, you want to reuse it over and over again. And you don't want to have that JS file nested inside your theme. You want to decouple that, um, uh, that dependency. So uh, one pattern that I see with uh, Drupal 7 is that with all the libraries, there is a specific directory and cites all libraries, and you toss everything in there. And that way your modules have access to it, your theme has access to it. Um, this is essentially the same concept. It's just the best pattern to kind of put all those files in there. And uh, when you actually do need to call this uh, particular library, you just uh, create like a symbolic link or something. So you don't have a duplicate libraries going around. And uh, yeah, so they could get cached a single time uh, as far as the browser is concerned. And let me show you how that changes the actual workflow of, uh, of your themes. So say, for instance, we go under planet and uh, space, that display. So um, actually, I don't want to go into that one. Let's go into the grid right here. Um, what we had before is we would have to pre-process these fields. Um, but again, this plugin already did it for you. So you don't have to have um, all that excess PHP inside of your, uh, inside of your templates. So for uh, any uh, new uh, themers, I guess, who uh, don't really, uh, haven't really had the experience to deal with PHP and Drupal, and they just want to do what they're good at, you know, their CSS or their JavaScript, they could just come in here and create the template in a very natural uh, way. And uh, yeah, just go to town without having to write any PHP. Likewise with any other template that we have. A lot of these are just printing out images. Just printing out single variables, but anyway, inside of this uh, row template, you could you know essentially do your own custom markup in here and not have to worry about any additional PHP that's going on. And you might have noticed these uh, little symbols saying that oh this is a symbolic link; it's not actually there, but it's actually referencing it inside of the site's all libraries directory. And uh, what I should do is um, let's create a view, just kind of see how this actually uh, works out at the end. So we'll go ahead and add, we'll call this um, Bob. Now hit next. And I'm going to uh, add in some filters. I want to pull in some content types. Node type right here. And I'm going to say this is a type of uh, galactic news. And let's add in some fields. All the node stuff. So we want an edit link. We have a link right here. I want to pop in the NID, the path, the post date, teaser, sticky, title, a bunch of stuff, whatever. All right, cool. So we added all these. I'm just going to go ahead and save this real quick. And let's create a theme packet display. And I'm not going to change anything about this. I'm just going to leave it as defaults. It's all there. Cool. So now that we have that saved, we'll go into the theme packet little settings right here. Preprocess fields? Yes, absolutely. Do this all automatic for me. Awesome. It's already there. As far as the assets, you don't necessarily have to include them right away. So we're going to just say include assets right now. Oh, the problem is that they found the template, but they haven't necessarily found any uh, assets inside of them. So this can give you a little message saying that, hey, you know, we found some stuff, uh, but there's no compatible template because we haven't gone into the theme information and uh, figured out which, uh, which template we want to override. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Typically with the, with the rows, you want to use the most specific. Um, there's some cases where 
you wouldn't want to. You want to make it a little more generic, but uh, yeah, for the most case, use the most specific. I go over to our views, just collapse all these out. Create a folder called bog. And inside of that, I didn't call it anything, so I'll just call it default for now. And in here, we're going to basically copy paste that file that I'll be looking for. The theme registry doesn't know anything about this yet, so we'll have to rescan the template files, scanned it, found it, and so now we should have our view template that we just created to be highlighted. So now it's actually even looking for this. And I'm going to just uh, print out hello uh, Bob for now. And what we should probably do is pop it into our uh, page. So, Nate, Launcher, Custom, okay. And we're basically going to just embed it. I'll just copy this over. It's called Bob. Refresh this page. I'll find it. Cool. Down. All right, cool. So we see, hello Bob, hello Bob, hello Bob. These are all the the rows that it's found, and there's no particular uh, value to these yet. But we'll go ahead and, and uh, check out whatever was pre-processed for us. What does pre-process fields do? I, I just missed that. Right here. Okay. So um, essentially, all the data that you'd get from your rows, right? Basically, all the field data. Um, this value is available inside of the rows template, but it's kind of cryptic. It's not. It's inside of a field. Uh, sorry, a fields array, and each one of the array keys has basically an ID that view says, "Oh, this uh, field has an ID of like field thumbnail FID or whatever." Right? Um, and what you typically want to do in your templates is you don't want to have a bunch of PHP clutter in your templates. You want to make it as clean as possible. And so what you would typically do is uh, just say, you know, my variable thumbnail equals fields. Uh, what's it? Field field. Um, thumbnail, FID, uh, arrow, content, because it's an object, so you have to access that property, so you use the arrow operator. And, uh, and then you're assigning basically that variable, the content of views, the content that views would have. And with that variable, we can just pop it into your custom markup very easily and you know, just make it a lot more terse. But the issue is that you know, a lot of themers, they don't want to do any PHP, right? so they want to make it as easy as possible. Uh, what this particular tool does is uh, does that part for you. So look for that array, fields, edit, node, content, grab that value, and just pop it into whatever you want to call it over here. This is essentially going to be the variable name. So as soon as you create these variable names, like um, uh, Google, right? that's going to be the edit node link. And once that's saved, we have access to that now inside of this. PHP, prints, Google. Refresh this and make sure that this is doing Google. Edit links. Oh, um, edit node. So that's the link when you're logged in. I'm not logged in. So let's do that with uh, like the title Yahoo. Save this. Okay, cool. So now this is the titles of every one of those fields. So the whole pre-processing uh, pre -processing feature is uh, just basically you assign whatever variable name you want to use, whatever makes sense to you. And uh, you have access to them inside of your template. So this can be h1. And so now at this point, you can just go to town with your own custom markup and uh, have it as clean as possible. So now the interesting part of, uh, say, styling this, right? Um, you don't want to have to do any PHP to include any CSS, so let's just go ahead and add um, bob.css. And uh, all of my H1s, I want them to uh, to be bold or something. No, not bold. What am I saying? Let's give it a color of red. And as far as uh, the theme registry or the asset registry is concerned, these uh, don't exist yet. So you just have to go over here and say rescan asset registry and find my assets. And there it is, style, Bob CSS. So it found it for us and it's going to automatically update that. 
and as soon as this view is rendered, we're going to have red bob titles, right? So as a themer, all they have to do essentially is just work inside of this directory, create CSS files or create JavaScript files naturally, and uh, the tool is going to essentially uh, build all that stuff for you and uh, include those assets, and uh, you won't have to deal with any uh, PHP at this point, just know whatever variable you want to use. And, you know, you have a little GUI for that right here. Uh, right here. <laughs> and there you go. You can go to town with that. So, that is the whole idea of this presentation. So, is the uh, find assets, mm -hmm. when it finds them, is it then updating the include <coughs> statements to um, put in the correct path? Is that what it's? Is yeah, so. When, when Drupal is searching through um, all your template files, it has the context of what directory it's currently in. So when it finds that, and it finds a bunch of other CSS files, basically concatenates them, you know, and you have a bunch of other metadata about your files as well. And it'll save that into an asset registry that doesn't exist in Drupal, it's something that I did, but it works essentially like the theme registry. So you don't necessarily have to do any code, like if this file exists, include it. You know, it, it already knows the file exists, so it's going to, you know, add it in whenever it's in the context of rendering that view. How did you create the default folder and folder? They could be arbitrary names. Uh, the role that I had was, like, say if we uh, call this something else. Let me cancel this. I'm finding a problem. I just don't understand why you need the additional folder that's in the where you should just look for Okay. So inside of your view, you can have a lot of different displays, right? And every display could be vastly different from the previous one. And it's, you know, it's typically not a good idea to have all of your assets or all your template files of that entire view, which has like multiple displays, just thrown all out there. Because it's kind of difficult to manage. So you just want to look at the third display and nothing else. You just go into that directory. I mean, it's just an organization. That's all. So we could have called this um, taco. And, you know, it's still going to find it right here. I mean, we can, we can name these folders whatever you want. So there's no, like, strict naming convention for this. It's whatever you feel most comfortable. So it's just forward-thinking the fact that you might have multiples in there. Right? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So you can name your theme file whatever. Well, you name your theme file according to the Drupal way, and then you can put them in any folders underneath the theme directory, and Drupal will scan the folder and find it. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, as far as, like, the, you know, what is the naming schema that I have to use, um, you could literally use anything and have it be registered, uh, but Views is going to ignore it. This is just a predefined list of what I'm going to look for. So, so yeah, and as far as placement goes, it could go anywhere. And I think because of that, um, it gets pretty hectic because everybody has a different style, or they just, maybe they don't know that you put it into a different directory to kind of keep things organized. So you have, like, in your theme directory, like, 35, 70 different template files. And, I mean, you can see that these uh, template file names aren't really helpful. They say the name of the view, but you know when you look at the actual display ID, so usually it's like page one or block two, block four. It's not really descriptive as far as like what was this. So that's the whole purpose of you know create a folder and then you have like a really cool name where you can access. Oh yeah, I remember what that was. So yeah, um, any other questions? I'm open for anything. Go ahead. Sorry if I missed it. Was that a plugin you wrote, or was that a plugin? Yeah, so it's a, it's a plugin that I wrote uh, to just make the whole process of um, theming your views a lot easier. You know, all the extra steps you have to do, um, it basically handles that for you, so yeah. And as far as uh, downloading it, um, you know, I don't know why, but there's such a long queue for uh, getting a CVS account um, because, you know, there's people who volunteer to actually review the code and blah, blah, blah. So hopefully soon there'll be a contrib module where you can just download. Have you uh, played with that, with that semantic view though? I haven't. What does that do? Uh, I haven't. I haven't. What does what is, what is semantics views do? It kind of does a similar thing where you can change the output. Um, but I've only seen like a demo on it that was like five minutes, so I figured. Oh, really? Yeah, I've heard of it. I've just been really uh, naive. <laughs> I should uh, check it out though. Yeah. So, any other questions? All right, you guys are attentive. Cool. So, thank you. Oh, wait. Yeah. If you have a view that has a bunch of displays and you want the markup to be the same as all of them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, would you, how would you arrange the directory structure in that situation? So there's a, have you guys have heard of like a, a tags in views? When you create a view, you have an opportunity to, 
to uh, put in a tag. I think you could even do it up here. Oh, okay, description tags. All right, and you could you know add in the view tag uh, like a uh, navigation or whatever. Right. So in the times when you do want multiple views that has different data, but it's still kind of constructed the same way, and you do want to theme them. Like say for instance, you're doing a, a series of reports, and all the reports are like a table structure, and they're all styled the same way. You don't want to keep repeating yourself over and over again. So with uh, views tags. Um, you could basically just label it, and uh, with that, once that's there, when you look inside of your uh, theme information, you now have, here you go, views, view, navigation, tpl.php. So now you can override in that particular scope and just handle all of those views, all those reports, all at once. All right, I never need to use tags Yeah, <laughs> apparently. Um, so, yeah. And as far as like the inclusion of assets go, I mean, it's still finding the directory of where this particular template's found, and so it's going to find in all the assets. And uh, and yeah. And as far as like the organization of it, um, one thing that I do is, uh, you know, and I haven't really found an optimal way of doing this, but you know, inside of the views directory, I'll create something like underscore tags, and inside I'll put in the name tag like navigation, and then those template files in there. So it's not necessarily tied into a particular view or a particular display, but it's just kind of global. So you, but you can't put files inside of it. So you have uh, a, a directory for the view, and then you have directories for the displays and everything. But you can't put template files in the views directory, and then have more specific files within the display. Yes, you you could you could, because Drupal is gonna you know it, it basically scans every file inside of your theme. Mm -hmm. What's that? The theme package. Well, I mean, if you do move the template, like say, for instance, you have a um, particular one, uh, a particular template scope that you want to override, and you put it in, you know, directly inside of that view name folder, um, it's going to find it there. And if you want those assets to be included with that template, because they kind of go hand in hand, then you would put that CSS file or that JavaScript file inside of that same directory structure. And if you have like something that's more specific, then okay, you can create another template and put it in there. Um, but keep in mind, though, is that uh, views is only going to register or use one template at a time. So if you have like a default view, whatever, template, and you have something that's more specific, well, views is always going to target the more specific one anyway. So you kind of have to be careful as far as like how you name your things and be tactical. So, yeah. Anyway, any other uh, questions? All right. So, thank you. Get. Git is, uh, you've heard of a CVS or SVN? Yeah. Right. So version control systems, right? Uh, Git is another type of version control system. Um, um, it gives you an idea of that. Yeah. Yeah.